Hello, this is Eric and Opaos, and welcome to my RAM slash memory tweaking guide. Some of this will involve risk, so I suggest you learn how to reset your BIOS before you do any of this, because an older processor won't necessarily support the fast speed possible, and a lot of people don't realize this. What would happen? Well, what could happen is a hard lock, as in you won't be able to run your computer and you have to take it to a store to repair it if you don't know how to reset your BIOS because that's all they'll have to do to fix the problem. It'll literally take them maybe five minutes at most and you'll be paying full price. So be careful about that. Now, actually tweaking the RAM slash memory timings can result in huge, huge performance improvements, especially with the AMD Ryzen processors. Update your BIOS if you want to make sure that your memory is as stable as it can be because AMD Ryzen processors, for instance, they have a bunch of updates for memory compatibility. Even Intel has some updates, but it's more of an issue on AMD's side of things. So the first thing you'll probably want to do is actually download an app known as CPU ID. It's actually at the website CPUID.com. You can search it via Google or your respective search engine. So now I have CPU ID brought up on search. I'm going to go to the website, that's CPUID.com. And then from there, I want CPU Z. In my case, I'm using Windows, so I'm going to download for Windows. Let's skip that ad. I don't want that. And then I want to go down to English. I can do it as a setup file, a zip file. Or if you're Chinese, you can download the Chinese version. But I'm just going to go to the English setup file. Then I don't have to worry about unzipping a file. It just installs. So download now. Download it. Then you can run your program. You'll have to accept the agreement in order to in actually install it. Create a desktop icon. Sure, why not? We don't need to view the readme file unless you really have your heart set on it. So now I'm going to go to my CPU ID, which is under my CPU ID. Then I'll run that. And with this, you'll see all different details here. So you'll see your uh, CPU details right off the bat. And if I go to different settings, you can see the main board, memory. So you can see the RAM frequency. Actually, um, mine is actually this speed, I actually have it down clocked in my particular case, just slightly, so it can actually run my CPU overclocked slightly. <laughs> so that's how I tweaked mine. But you'll see right here, these are the regular overclock timings. I'm actually running tighter timings. So there's actually a fine balance between the speed at your RAM megahertz and the actual timings you're running at for speed. So now we've got this program. The point is I want to go to XMP so I can see there's two different profiles this particular RAM has at 3600 and basically 3000 megahertz. And of course there's different timings based on which one you choose. So what I'm going to do from here now is go to the BIOS. Now before I go to the BIOS I want to point out one thing. Different CPUs will have different speeds you can actually run at max. So you may notice that you have say, let's say your RAM is running at 2133 or let's say 2400 and you can't just simply up the speed to what you want and it just simply hard locks or crashes. The reason why is it's not changing the timings with the RAM. If you're running at 2400 megahertz, your RAM timings are likely to be tighter than if you're running at the overclocked speed that the RAM actually comes at. So just changing it means you're going to crash your computer. So there's better ways to do this. So to get to the BIOS, we now have to reboot the computer or actually uh, just start up the computer from uh, cold start. And you got to press delete key to enter the BIOS or F1 in certain cases. In my case, it's the MSI Gaming Edge B550i and I have to press delete key. So where I want to go to, at least in this particular BIOS, most BIOS would be uh, more basic like a menu like this. So in my case, I'm MSI. I want to choose the advanced mode and my overclock mode. You might have simply, simply memory itself, RAM, or you might have just overclock settings. So the most basic setting you'll want, and all motherboards should have it, 
as long as your RAM supports it is XMP mode and that's the proper way to overclock your memory not choose uh, the RAM frequency because this can result in a crash because let me show you here my advanced configuration right here my RAM can't mem run at the speed if I go to 3600 megahertz it crash my system my RAM this can't run at this speed let's get out of here so what I have to do is choose an XMP profile setting and I'm going to choose profile one that's what most memory settings will be for the fastest speed that your RAM is rated for and so once you set that you'll want to reboot your computer so it saves of course there's more settings than this this is just the basic most basic part so you want to make sure your RAM is actually stable at that setting so after we're saved at the faster speed you can see the new speed here we can actually see different settings like right here this base clock this is actually what they call the front side bus and I'm overclocking my CPU by doing this as well as well as my RAM so both are actually being overclocked so if you ever wondered that for small little timings that is that you can also go to say on this particular board advanced DRAM configuration these are advanced timings if you know you can tweak your memory itself this is something you might want to play with command rate one at least on my particular uh, RAM sticks is not fully stable so what I have to do is choose gear down mode if I want to keep maintain my speed otherwise I choose T2 so that's one thing to test out if your RAM is stable so this might solve instability issues is choosing gear down mode and so as you do each thing I recommend rebooting like saving and rebooting so you can figure out where your issue happened if you discover an issue with a crash you can always change timings manually to actually gain more speed more performance and then of course the best option is normally go to Windows however that would take a very long time to show you this guide if I'm actually going to Windows every time so the next thing I'd want to maybe tweak is that safe my memory timings here if I go to sub timings normally TRP plus TRAS should be what TRC is in a sense you can think of this almost like a vertical timing up and down timing and this is a horizontal timing. you can think of it that way which this plus this is a uh, this is your fastest refresh of those two timings however this is a big delay so normally I should be I should technically be able to choose a 21 plus 39 so that's 50 60 so now I'm going to change my TRC to 60 you want to be mindful not changing more than you should at a time to make sure it's actually stable so this is a much tighter timing so the lower the numbers the faster the performance that's a general rule with the RAM so a higher number means a higher latency a higher delay there's also videos in the link down below so you can actually tweak your RAM to your heart's content however if I want to go through in detail this video would actually be hours long in fact if you want to look at the videos I have below I would tweak your memory you're gonna be looking at least 45 minutes and to tweak it you're gonna be looking at hours it says rated 85 here but right now I'm running at 60 no problem so if I go back to memory I can see right here my TRC is at 60 so it's not having an issue at this time whatsoever but it's not rated that low so the lower these timings of course the better speed you can get but you have to be mindful of that if I was running at the 2400 megahertz timings right here basically right here's 2400 megahertz if I had this change the speed without doing XMP honestly this memory would not be stable it's too tight at times these are too low and between megahertz and uh, timings megahertz is king but if you're going well too high of numbers you're gonna start losing performance as well now you might be also wondering what's the max voltage you should do I recommend max of 1.4 volts or also risk your memory controller especially since your CPU will get hotter because the memory controller is built into the CPU these days there are other channels I'll tell you otherwise but I'm trying to save you the headache because once your actual memory controller has problems you can never get the speed of your memory you ever got before it's your CPU that's affected that knowing how to reset your BIOS is very very 
very extremely important and updating your BIOS of course can definitely help with having stability in higher memory speeds. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to Not BIOS if you want to see different videos. Of course, there's a lot of videos. I'm actually moving over to Rumble because honestly, I don't have enough to subscribers for how much work I put into these videos. So please consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And thank you very much for watching and have yourselves a wonderful day. This is not BIOS Tech and Hardware.